let's be real, not everybody can be the Joker. When you're looking at a career as a criminal, characters like the Joker, Two-Face, Poison Ivy, Bane, the Penguin, the Riddler, well, I mean those are high standards and expectations people. So naturally Batman has had a lot of villains over the years who grind his gears in a different way. They don't challenge him, they just make his life more difficult with their idiotic and irritable tactics. These villains are bottom barrel stuff. They're the villains that mostly appeared during the Silver Age and the era where comics were a little too wacky and campy for our contemporary taste buds, but still provided for a whole lot of laughs. Many of these villains wouldn't make more than one or two appearances back in the day, and well after hearing what their deal is, you'll probably guess why. So today we are counting down the top 10 supervillains who annoy Batman the most. Get ready for the giggles. Starting us off in at number 10, The Penny Plunderer. Penny Plunderer has to be a personal favorite of mine. First appearing in World's Finest Comics issue 30 in 1947, The Penny Plunderer, aka Joe Coyne, was a fellow who used to sell newspapers, but after he was caught stealing pennies, yeah, he became real hard and decided that a life of crime was for him. How did he commit his crimes? Well, everything had to be penny themed. This included wild schemes like putting Batman and Robin into a death trap shaped like a giant penny. He's the reason why Batman has the giant penny in his bat cave. Although poor Penny Plunderer would later be retconned out of Bat's Rogue Gallery, and the giant penny was attributed to Two Face as an item he once used to try to crush the Dark Knight. So, dude doesn't even get to keep his claim to fame. That's how much he annoyed Batman and DC. To be fair, he wasn't really operating on the best of business models. And surely he wouldn't have flowered in Canada. We stopped making pennies years ago. And at number 9, Doctor Doom. Now we're not talking about THE Doctor Doom here of Marvel fame. Oh no. This dude's one and only appearance in DC Comics was during Detective Comics issue 158, and he didn't even get a real name. He was known solely as Doctor Doom, but don't think that he lives up to that name. His biggest claim to fame was an attempt to steal a sarcophagus. He failed, and then jumped into the ocean and hid under a dock while he was being chased by the authorities. But that's not the end of it. He then broke into the Batcave, but clearly didn't think his plan through because he then decided to just try to use all of the trophies in the Batcave to fight against the dynamic duo. This resulted in him throwing a grenade at Batman and then hiding inside the sarcophagus that he tried to steal, but then he got stuck inside of it, with the blast stealing the ancient coffin with him still inside of it. So yeah, technically Batman and Robin have a dead guy inside a sarcophagus in their Batcave that they never bothered to try to pry out and save. It was just that irritating, and I guess it wasn't worth it. And at number 8, Anarchy. This V for Vendetta wannabe is Lonnie Mackin. Lonnie's motivation to becoming a criminal was that he had a pen pal when he was 11, and learned that his pen pal's life in his third world country sucked balls. He then decided to get woke, and learned all he could about politics. And then he decided that he was going to be the one who helped give the oppressed people of Gotham City hope. Right. Sure you will, buddy. Anarchy's first move was to read a newspaper and then follow up on some workers' rights claims. Eventually, though, he stirs up enough trouble and crosses paths with Batman, who then figures out that Anarchy is just a kid. Oh, and while all this is happening, Anarchy had somehow banned together a group of homeless dudes, including one guy named Legs who was crippled, in order to help him fight for justice. So yeah, you can see why Batman would groan over this self-righteous guy. Coming in at number 7, Captain Stingery. Can't help but feel bad for Captain Stingery. For starters, he was one child of a set of quadruplets. He had a rough time growing up, and he dressed up as a pirate as a means of finding himself. He also falsely believed that one of his three twin brothers was secretly Batman. So Bruce Wayne, being the ultimate troll, decides to get all three of Stingery's brothers to dress up like Batman, in order to get him to stop stirring up trouble and lure him out. But really, it felt like it was more of a way for him to screw with Stingery's head more than anything else. I guess sometimes you gotta have fun, right? In at number 6, The Ten-Eyed Man. The Ten-Eyed Man has ten eyes, but... They're on his damn fingertips. How is this even a thing, you guys? Okay, so real talks. In theory, this villain is only a major threat to himself. He can't do anything with his hands without seriously hurting one of his ten eyes. You throw something his way, he'll go to catch it and BAM! He's hurt his eyes. This actually happened too, by the way. With a shrub. He got tossed a shrub and then he was in a lot of pain. First appearing in Batman issue 226 in 1970, he lost his eyesight from an explosion, but gained 10 other eyes on the tips of his fingers, and decided to take Batman on by demanding the Dark Knight meet him in Vietnam, since he was a war vet and wanted to fight on his own turf. For whatever reason, Bats went along with this, which eventually led to Ten-Eye Man being captured and imprisoned. He would later be removed from the DC Universe thanks to Crisis on Infinite Earths, where he was killed off. Yeah, no surprise there. Moving on to the midpoint of our list, in at 5, Crazy Quilt. A former thief and painter 
winter, Crazy Quilt first hit the scene in Boy Commandos issue 15 in 1946. Similar to our last number, he was blinded, cause of his tragedy being a gunshot wound, which led to the character to volunteer for an experimental procedure which would leave him only seeing bright colors. His main go to from there was to use a helmet that hypnotizes victims with flashes of bright color, but really, he boiled down to committing petty crimes and vandalizing things, with his threats consisting of removing all color from Gotham. Okay? Batman doesn't have time for that. Especially when it was revealed that Crazy Quilt was using a water soluble dye to commit his crimes. Do you ever hear of rain before? Guess not. Moving on to 4, The Ventriloquist. First appearing in Detective Comics issue 583 in 1988, the alias of Ventriloquist has belonged to three different characters in the DC Universe over the years. But for this number specifically, we're talking about the first version of him, Arnold Wesker. So why is this fellow annoying? Because without sticking his hand up the butt of his puppet, who was named Scarface, he's just a quiet, meek dude who is absolutely harmless. Scarface, the puppet, is a 1920s gangster, of course, who was used as a means of coping with the disassociative identity disorder that Wesker developed thanks to seeing his mom get assassinated by thugs from a rival mafia family. This puppet becomes a full blown gangster when in use, Tommy gun and all, but Here's the thing, Batman takes down crime bosses like it's a walk in the park. So a puppet sized crime boss who isn't actually a crime boss? Well, you can see why bats would kind of groan over that. Not much of a threat. And at number 3, Polka Dot Man. The Polka Dot Man is another Batman villain that didn't manage to see the light of day for overly long. First appearing in 1962 in Detective Comics 300, Polka Dot Man aka Abner Krill decided for unknown reasons, to become a criminal and make his MO putting dots in spots all over Gotham City. As you can imagine, Batman and Robin were like, yo dude, what, what are you doing? They shut him down real quick. Although kudos to him for managing to catch Robin, which felt like pure luck if we're being honest. Polka Dot Man's shtick is that the dots on his costume do a variety of interesting stuff, from creating weapons or morphing into an escape vehicle, which is as ridiculous as it sounds. Years later, he would reappear, and aside from his costume, he basically abandoned his Polka Dot gimmick, instead choosing to use a baseball bat to assault a Gotham PD officer. Batman didn't even bother to get involved in that one, because Harvey Bullock got to Polka Dot Man first, and then beat the crap out of him, which led to Krill filing a lawsuit against the Gotham PD for police brutality. On the plus side, because of how utterly ridiculous this character was, he has appeared in a slew of other Batman related media, including the animated series Batman the Brave and the Bold. And he's defeated there when Batman jumps in three dots in his uniform, causing him to tilt like a pinball machine and shut down. Characters even in the upcoming LEGO DC Supervillains game too, so hopefully he'll actually get a moment to shine there. At least, you know, for our benefit in terms of humor. Moving on to number two. Condiment King. God bless Condiment King. Really. He's a dude whose MO is to fire condiments at people. Hope you like ketchup. So for context, Condiment King came to be in the Batman the Animated Series, created by Paul Dini and Bruce Timm. He was literally a mockery of the long list of silly Batman villains the Cape Crusader has had to fight over the years. His whole shtick was to use condiments to fight in battle. So ketchup, mustard, relish, probably mayo, you name it. I can see why people wouldn't want to get sprayed with mayo, to be perfectly honest. It's unappealing, but not really life threatening, you know? Suspect is a male costumed extremist, armed with what appears to be a ketchup gun. It's gonna be one of those nights. Condiment King didn't even prove to be much more than a nuisance for Batman. He ended up slipping on a puddle of ketchup that he had created, and nearly fell off a roof in the process. Tough luck, buddy. Finally, in at number one, Kite Man. Kite Man is the product of creatives at DC running out of ideas when it came to whipping up new villains. Who in their right, totally not desperate mind, would think, hey, you know what's pretty darn evil? Kites. Kites are evil. Let's make a villain whose entire persona is based around kites. Yeah, great work, everybody. Great day at the office. Oh, dear lord. Kite Man, aka Charles Chuck Brown, first appeared in Batman issue 133 in August of 1960. So he's a prime Silver Age villain, that's for sure. Kite Man's whole shtick is that he has a glider kite contraption that he soars around in, along with a pretty silly costume. He appeared twice in the comics, facing off against the Dark Knight, and poor Batman, in order to put an end to Kite Man's shenanigans, had to get a kite of his own to chase him. Kite fight! But Bruce wasn't the only hero that Kite Man tormented. He made Hawkman and Hawkgirl groan in frustration a few times too in the comics. The character went on to make an appearance in DC Rebirth as a very unstable individual whose catchphrase was, Kite Man, hell yeah! Yeah, you, you can imagine why that would be annoying. Alright, there we have it friends. Which one of these villains did you find the most entertaining? 
Which ones do you secretly hope would make their way back into the pages of Batman's comics? For, I guess, comic relief. Let us know in those comments below. If you dug this video, hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe if you guys want to hang out with us some more. We've got a ton of other Batman and DC videos, including ones on dumbest villains that you should totally check out. In the meantime though, thanks for watching everybody. I'll catch you all in the next video.